Before I talk about what I really want to say in this, because uh, I'm not really going to talk too much about the game. The game itself is great. Uh, I, I, one of the an excellent Super Bowl to watch and competitive game right there at the last drive. The team that I wanted to lose lost. I could really care less about the Packers, but nothing against any of the you know the players on the team. I have no problem with Aaron Rodgers and Jordy Nelson and, and Roger and all those guys. Um, you know, but I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. I there's no way I want to see the Steelers get number seven in the Cowboys Stadium. So congrats to the Packers and their fans, and congrats to the Steelers and their fans as well. An excellent ball game. Everybody's entertained. The game itself was great. The football players did their job to give the nation a game worth watching. But really what I'm here to talk about is everything around it and how this really was not a good showing for the DFW area for a Super Bowl. Now, to be, to be fair, we got hit here in Texas with... Some weather that we're not used to. Now, before I say anything, I, I posted a video up of, of snow here in Austin that early that morning. Um, you know, and it was I think it was worse up there in Dallas or in the, in the Fort Worth area. And just kind of showing what we're doing. Yes, UT was was uh, was shut down that day. Uh, a lot of places were. I didn't go that morning into my internship. I got an email that morning saying don't drive up here because it's bad. Um, and yes, to all you people from Minnesota and Wisconsin and all those places up north, we get it. Two inches of snow is nothing to y'all. But down here in Texas, we have sleet here. And we also don't salt the roads. There's no snow plows. There's no snow shovels. And people aren't used to driving in that junk. So I, I keep getting a lot of comments from people up north acting like, yeah, you're exactly right. We don't know how to deal with this kind of stuff because that's not the, the climate we live in. Um, I would like to challenge any of those guys to come down to the to East Texas or Central Texas um, during uh, during August when it's over 100 degrees plus the humidity and got there to do two a days practice. Uh, so it, it's just we all have, we live in different worlds, man, guys. So that's that. But going back to what happened with, with the way Dallas and Jerry Jones kind of handled this thing. Um, overall, it was it seemed like everyone was just trying to cope with the weather. Um, there was a cab strike in Dallas, so that didn't help with travel. You know, people didn't bring their cars, and if they did, it was hard to drive. You couldn't really walk on the sidewalks. Um, people were just wanting to get to the game. And my the main crux of what I'm going to say, of course, Christina Aguilera was terrible, didn't even know the words of the song. Black Eyed Peas, I wasn't a big fan of theirs anyway. And after their live performance, they really do seem like they were just a studio band. because. And I know the acoustics in Cowboy Stadium was bad. I know when George Strait came there, when he was the first um, guy to have a concert in Cowboy Stadium, uh, I had friends of mine that went to, the, went, to the, went to watch him play. said you couldn't even hear him sing. Uh, because in a lot of parts of the stadium, because the acoustics were so bad, and, and Texas Stadium was bad about that too. So I don't know what it is about Cowboys stadiums, but they don't. The sound isn't so great there. Um, but during the game, some of you may know this, and if you don't, this is uh, this is one thing that really rubbed me the wrong way. Because when I put myself in this position, I really think about how I'd react and how it would really mess me up. Um, some of you may know f around 400 people were displaced during the game uh, because they had bought tickets to seats that were available at the time, uh, but were told that they couldn't sit there because it's against fire regulation. The fire marshal came in and, and declared that those seats were not safe to have people on um, due to the fire regulations and, and capacity and that kind of stuff. One, of course, you would say to the fire marshals, why right two hours before kickoff would you find this out? Now, they're, they're taught that what they say is due to the weather, they weren't able to get in there as well. At the same time, Jerry took a while to put those seats in. But speaking to Jerry... He was trying to break a record. He was trying to, you know, beat the Rose Bowl back in the I forgot when that was back uh, during the uh, when the Rose Bowl had over 103,000 and the Cowboy Stadium got close, uh, falling under about 700 or so. Um, but when you start sacrificing fan enjoyment and fan money to try to push a record that you that you just want to have, um, and then it backfires. I gotta say, you know, the people that were displaced, some of them, and, and these were nosebleed guys, because a lot of things about the Super Bowl, I've never been to a Super Bowl. But from what I've heard, people who've been there or talk about being there, um, a lot of it's corporate. A lot of the states, especially the good seats, are bought by corporations and things of that sort. It doesn't really have a lot of times you don't get that fan feel there because a lot of people there aren't aren't the usual people who go to Super Bowls or who go to regular football games. But the people that were displaced in this game were up in the 400 section, which I believe is at the very top of the stadium. So these were people who legitimately paid their money to bring their families to watch their teams play. So I'm guessing these were people who flew down from Wisconsin or Pennsylvania to watch their Steelers or watch their Packers play. And then they're told they bought their, they did everything legal, 
you know, and they were told, sorry, you can't sit here. And they now they moved some of them to better seating in the, in the, in the stadium, but others were moved to a, to a place where they couldn't see the field and had to watch it on tele, on a television. So it was pretty much, it got ridiculous. One, one guy said who was just placed, it was at, like they put us in a sports bar. And he could have just stayed back where he's from to watch it there. That's a huge black eye on, on the stadium and everyone around that. Because you think about that. They, 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 now, they did pay the people. The, the, the regular ticket prices there was $800, face value. So each person was given $2,400. They tripled the value of it uh, for them. But they didn't take into account the travel, the... Hotel gouging. You know the hotels in Dallas were just, uh, especially Arlington around Six Flags and whatnot, on that little strip over there, were just super high for this. Um, in any surrounding area, and parking was insane. If you couldn't park at the stadium and anywhere else, there were there were there were there were um, offices and businesses that were offering parking spots. Some of them up to one thousand dollars. Okay, so that's how that's that's the kind of expense you've got to think about going. To throw in the fact that if you're a huge Packers fan, let's just say use the Packers. If I'm a huge Green Bay Packer fan in Wisconsin and I get the chance to go and watch my team in the Super Bowl, and then you tell me that I'm sitting down in my seat and you tell me, sorry, sir, we're going to have to move you to a TV screen because we screwed up the seating stuff. That's a lawsuit because this game is – sports means a lot to us here in America, especially football. Football means a lot. And you can make, make, make the argument that it may mean too much. But there's a lot of the NFL banks on the emotional attachment we have to teams and we have to this sport. And when you put that much into it, and when you want to come to a game and watch your team play so bad, whether they're going to be little specks on the field, you want to be able to say, I was in the stands when I saw Aaron Rodgers win MVP. Or I was in the stands when I saw Jordy Nelson catch that touchdown pass. You know what I'm saying? But instead, you're moved to a television screen. And what do you tell your family if you're the dad and you bring your kid to the Super Bowl and now you're sitting watching on TV? I mean, the, the, the passion people have for this sport, people pay $200 just to stand outside, outside the stadium and watch on a screen. Just say they were a part of it. And to be able to actually sit in the seat, look at the field and told you've got to go because we screwed up? I look for there to be a lot of losses, and I'm not sure who the blame falls on. If it's just Jerry Jones... If it's if the fire marshals could have gotten there quicker, if the seating company they would put the, who well, whoever at the end of the day these paying customers who took time out of their life to come down to North Texas to watch their team play did not get to have that experience that they wanted, and to me and the NFL prides itself on uh, being uh, being for the fans and about the fan experience. This is a huge huge hit up to hit to that. Um, so and it's hard. It's hard, when you when you have emotion involved like this. It's hard to make up with that with money, you know. And twenty four hundred dollars is not going to do it. So I look to see in in the in in a little bit. There's going to be some lawsuits. There's going to be something, and just in warning, overall Dallas did not have a great Super Bowl experience. The Super Bowl itself was great. The game was awesome, but everything surrounding that 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 makes the city is kind of on the city's part was not great. And the weather had a lot to do with that. But next time that Arlington gets the Super Bowl, which they will get another one, Jerry's got too much money, it's too big, and the screen is too awesome to not have it again. But as a Cowboys fan, as a guy who takes pride in this state, I I feel bad that, that that's the impression that a lot of people who'd never been to Texas before got of this. Not saying the hospitality in Dallas isn't great. It is. I know, I've been there. here, here in, in, in All over Texas. Austin, wherever. The people here are warm. We will want to, you know... Uh, be nice to people and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's that southern charm that we have down here. But you still got to have the facilities and you still have to realize the business end of it. So to all the people who came down for their game and didn't get to see their team play live and they had to watch on TV, that's going to cause some problems. And as a Cowboys fan, as a guy who takes pride in Texas, I feel bad about that. And next time they need to get this right because uh, this is a blot on us as Texans wanting to take pride in the state. So... Uh, Congratulations, Packers. Glad they won. Mainly glad the Steelers lost. Uh, but, hey, I got nothing to gloat about. My team was garbage this year. And uh, hopefully next time when they put something on there, maybe Dallas will be there. But with the way the Packers are looking, we're going to have to get better pretty quick if we want to compete against them as well as the other younger teams in the NFC. So come on, Jerry. you got to get this right.